All right, guys, beautiful morning out here. Welcome back. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I'm here in central Ontario, Canada. We are in the midst of summer, maybe approaching the end of summer. And well, it's a beautiful thing out here. Aside from the sun shining and my sludge tasting quite good this morning, there are no bugs. I'm going to take full advantage of it to start a project today. And that project's going to be right there. And before I talk about that project, let's just talk about where we're standing today. This area is a very big open area compared to what I have around me. Uh, as you guys can probably see, and if you've been around the channel, I have nothing but trees around here. And so to get a big open area like this is something special. This area you may have seen in previous videos where I was going through clearing out ferns with my box blade. That fern, uh, I guess extravaganza we'll call it, that got cleared out. Then I took some sand from here for some projects. I burned some brush in this area before as well. But now we have gone sort of full circle and it is now going back to a recreational area. What I did last fall was I put down some grass and you guys can see it's starting to come up here. Put down some grass last fall. Uh, I don't water it or anything. I basically just threw it down and I uh, went over it to uh, make sure it was covered with soil. And then I hope for the best. This is what we're left with, so not too bad. I am going to work on this project here today because there are lots of people behind the scenes who support me family and friends, and so I'm gonna support them today. For some of that family, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a playground. Now, I've not built a playground before, but you've probably seen some of my other projects. I built uh, an awful lot of other things. I can't imagine it's gonna to be too complex, but I gotta make sure I make it safe, I make it fun, and I use the lumber that I made. That lumber back there has been sitting in that trailer in that location for probably like two months. I had tried to get this project started like two months ago, and uh, I just didn't have the time, didn't have the will, wanted to finish off some other stuff first, didn't want to start too many projects at once, and so now, with the bugs gone, now is the time. What I'm going to do in just a minute, I'm going to get all that lumber out of the trailer, because I need that trailer to go load up with equipment. Where I'm at, I am nowhere near electricity, and so in order to power my miter saw and all my other tools, I need to have a generator. I'm going to bring out my generator, a little jobber, I'll bring out my miter saw, circular saw, level, screw gun, all that sort of stuff, and I'm going to set it up out here. All that stuff's going to go in the trailer to get out here. Once it's out here, we'll put up a little tent structure, and it'll pretty much look like we're living out here. I'm probably going to be living out here, I'm going to guess, for about three days. I'm guessing in about three days I can build that by myself. And uh, yeah, I don't know if that's wishful thinking or not, but I think we'll get it done. So that's what we're up against, hopefully when we're all done. This will look pretty good. At least I've got a basic idea what it's gonna look like in my mind. Hopefully it'll look good. Hopefully it'll be functional, safe, and fun. And then uh, when family and friends are out here, they can enjoy themselves, aside from just enjoying themselves on the trampoline. And yeah, we'll have a grand old time. That's what we're up against. Welcome back.
Well, I guess you could say things are getting serious around here. I'm putting on the old pouch. Check this thing out. This thing has uh, done a few projects in its day. I prefer a leather uh, work pouch here. But the reason I like this is nice and light. If you've ever worn a leather one and had to get wet, drags your way down. Spray nine, okay. All right. Best part about this pouch, let's see if I still remember. Two clicks. Hey, I still remember. Some people like the uh, hammer up here, like that. I don't like it there. While I'm walking, what happens? It bounces off my knee. I've tried moving the pouch back, but then it feels like I can't find my nails and whatever else I got in there. I like the two click on the back. One, that first click tells me it's in the loop. Second click is when it's hit the bottom. And early days of using this pouch, I tell you, I've dropped the hammer a few times. And you don't want to do that too many times if you're working with a, uh, if you're working with a crew. Funny story here. I was working with a crew of guys. I was a greenhorn and uh, these guys were professional carpenters and I, Essentially walked on the job site and a guy asked me for some nails. I went into our box of nails and I grabbed a handful like that and I passed them to him and he sort of looked at me funny and he didn't say anything. I didn't understand why. He was looking for something like this. You arrange your nails like that, you can slide them right into your pouch easy. If you just get that big handful, you can barely get anything in there and you certainly can't pull them back out. And uh, let me remember which side I want them on. I think I'll go with right about there. Here we go. All right, we're gonna fire up this thing and I'm not entirely familiar with it. I don't think I've used it at all. So I'm sure it works fine. It's just making sure I remember how it works. On, that'll be choke. Is that right? Choke. There's gas in it. Okay. Start and run. I think we leave it on start, turn it to run after. I don't know. 120 only. Okay, here we go. I feel like there was a, oh yeah, gas valve, I knew that. Hey, there we go. Let's make a cut. It's supposed to sound like that. Let me know down below in the comments. I don't know.
Probably not supposed to sound like that. Let's go see what's up. Okay, one of the joys of new equipment, at least new to me. So when we started it, we had it on run. There's gas in it. We started it with choke. I'm gonna try without choke. Let's see. Maybe we'll try choke one more time. I don't know. Gas is on. Okay. I don't know. Back to start. Uh, this is an aftermarket gas tank, by the way. Came with a big one, apparently. That's on, that's on. I'm gonna put choke at half. Okay. Start or run, I don't know. Those are all good. Let's take the load off completely. right there. At least I think that's it. Love it. Come on, just go. I don't know what to do here. I just don't know, I tell you. One of these days, I'm just going to open my wallet and buy one of those Honda 2000 inverter converter Geo. Sick of this. Come on. I tell you, get a match. If you guys want to know what I'm doing when I'm not building or sawing or what I'm working on this old janky trash, I tell you, it's just too much some days. dying out there I don't think it's a uh, air filter issue that air filters clean maybe it's a fuel issue
guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think here's the issue. This oil or air filter, almost called it an oil filter, it is completely saturated with oil. And I think the trouble is when I'm putting this on, air is not getting through this layer of oil. Uh, and as a result, it's choking itself out. Like if you have a look here, like check, check this out. And don't get me wrong, you know, there are treatments you put on air filters, but it just seems like this is a bit much. All right, guys, I cleaned this completely with brake cleaner, so I'm hoping it is good now. We're gonna fire it up and see what happens. thought it was idling perfect. I tell you, I tell you, frustration is right here. That thing will run for, I don't know, a minute, and then I get over here, and then I start cutting, as you saw, and then it quits again. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to pull start it. It's going to start. I'll finish the cut, and then it'll quit again. I'm going back to chainsaw carpentry. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, I'm not a rich man by any means, but uh, days like today, my wallet just screams that I should open it because I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of that thing. Uh, when you need tools and they don't work, you might as well not even have them. As you guys can imagine, it'd be faster for me just to use a chainsaw, and I'm just starting to think about that. Yeah, I better think a little longer. I'm not sure. do I tell you I just want to just uh, throw a match over there let her go and go have a nice new sludge I don't get too worked up too often but when equipment doesn't work I tell you it's just the most frustrating thing I'm out here I'm ready to work you guys can see that got everything hooked up saws in a good spot all my tools the one thing I need to work aside from this saw is that thing you know what the worst part is it worked last time I just don't get it I want a free generator. Oh, I tell you, I think we're done here for now. I know this probably seems out of the ordinary, but trust me, this happens more often than you know about. Stuff like this just doesn't work, and you're needing it, and now you're doing a carb clean, and you had full intentions of doing some woodworking. That's just a beautiful thing. Okay. 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 Piece number one, come on over here. So, you gotta disconnect the linkages. No bending them. Okay, there's one. Let's get back. Okay. Oh no, you didn't. 
No, you didn't. Come on, don't play that game here. <sighs> Look at this. So, it's hitting the frame. Make sure the gas is off. It's hitting the frame. You guys can see that. <sighs> I don't know if that's going to come off. Okay, carb is off. Anyways, let's uh, clean her out here just a little bit. Before we do that, what do we got here? Take the bowl off. If you're wondering how this feels on the cut on my hands, it feels wonderful. Okay. Looks like that's moving freely. Okay, that's good. Yeah, you can see, I don't know if you guys can see in there, there is some rust in there. You guys see that down in the bottom? So the fuel comes in there. There's a valve there, this black uh, piece here. There's a little bit of rust in there. So that could very well be an issue. So we're going to clean that out. And there's one more thing we're doing here. Right in the very bottom, there's a jet. So we're right up in that hole. I always get a little scared in there if I break it. I don't know who worked on this last or sometimes you know if someone's worked on the engine or the carb in particular because you go to take this jet out. That's what I was just talking about. You go take this out and see that slot there for your screwdriver? That's all rounded off. That's how I know someone's been in there. All right, so I'm gonna clean that out. There's a very fine hole in there and then I'll shoot some Clean her up in there. Maybe we'll make our way over to our handy dandy workbench. You guys see down there? Okay. Carb cleaner. This feels even better on the cuts on the hands. And I'm sure people will be saying, I'll oh, put a put a ring kit in there or a uh, gasket kit and all that. This is like emergency surgery here. We're just getting it done to get it done and get back working. There will there will be no kits put on here today. And I've lost my shooter, my uh, straw, whatever you call it. Let's see if we can line this up without going in my eyes. Okay, that jet should be clean. Let's give the carb a good once over here. Ow! Yeah, that feels wonderful. Oh, that hurts. Ah. Open cut. All right, guys, anyone want to take bets? I'm not feeling too confident today, but we're going to try it anyway. So fuel is on, fuel is on. I'm going to leave the choke off. I think I have it going. 
All right, guys. Well, I'm feeling pretty deflated today, and I think I'm just gonna pack it in. It's pretty hot out here for, well, for Central Ontario, Canada, it is. I couldn't get this thing going. I don't know what's wrong with it. I don't know how much more effort I'm putting into this thing. Uh, I'm sure someone's gonna see something that I did wrong, but for my, uh, my experience, I think I did everything I needed to in order for it to run. So it might be something other than a fuel air issue or a carb issue. If that's the case, well, that might become a winter project and that might end up sitting up on the shelf for a while. As you guys can see, I got next to nothing done. I didn't even get, what well, did I get one post cut? I got one post cut today. Now that's a productive day, check it out. This is going back here. I tell you, <laughs> some days you can't win. I forgot, this is a four by four, true dimension four by four. These are designed for three and a half by three and a half material. So I didn't even get one post done because this doesn't fit. You know what we're doing next time? I think we're going to the chainsaw and I think we're building the entire thing with the chainsaw. I know at the very least I've got two chainsaws. Inevitably one will start. Truthfully, they'll both start, but inevitably one will start and uh, we'll get something accomplished. Regardless of how straight the cuts are, we will be making progress and not having another day like this where I sort of look to the tractor, jump in, listen to the radio and head off to make another sludge. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Be well. See you next time.